Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Teach Me live event for our course Integrated STEM Teaching for Secondary Schools. Let me start by saying that on behalf of the STEM team, we thank you for your participation and contributions, which have been invaluable. Today, we have with us six teachers who participate in the course and who will present their activities and learning scenarios. Maria, Slavica, Emine, Carmelita, Olia and Effie. So without further delay, Maria, if you are ready, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Can you see the presentation? Okay, it's okay. Yes. Yeah. So my name is uh, Maria Lefteriu. I am from Greece. I teach uh, physics, uh, geography, biology. I'm working in the high school of Hersonsus, and uh, I will show you how it is possible to use the Earth Observation Browser in our classes. EO Browser is a free special data visualization tool, allows users to search and study a vast amount of satellite imagery. So what data can we found in this platform? How is it possible to search the data and how is it possible to visualize the, this data? So I have here uh, four links. Uh, in the first link, you can find the information about this browser and uh, many more things. In the second link, you can find the information for each satellite. Uh, for example, the Sentinel-5P measures the atmosphere. In the third link, you can find uh, some uh, lessons from ESA. And uh, with the fourth link, you can enter to this browser. So uh, at first, you will see something like that. I will uh, show you now my screen. I hope that uh, it's OK. Or this so you can see the place that you want to examine uh, for example here i choose greece and then you can see four uh, categories in the left tab uh, the discover the visualize compare and pins uh, here you can choose the satellite that you want to, to have for example i choose sentinel 5p and i will choose the nitrogen dioxide that i want to see um, the amount of nitrogen dioxide. Then I go below and here is the time range. I uh, have here the search button and I click on it and then I will see that I will have some results. For example, here I have 50 results and if I click in the visualize button, if uh, I click here or here, I will see uh, something like that. I have already downloaded it. And uh, we will see that with the red color, it's indicated the big concentration of the nitrogen dioxide. So for example, you can see the big uh, concentrations in um, big cities. So this, um, uh, we can use it, uh, all these measurements and to have all the visualization, uh, for example, in some uh, class of um, um, geography. So the last thing that I want to show you is that if you go now here at the discover again, you will see that uh, we have the default. And if I click on default here at the right, you will see some uh, other issues like uh, snow and glaciers or vegetation and forestry, volcanoes and so on. For example, if you want to study the climate change, you can uh, click on snow glaciers. Now I will click on volcanoes and uh, then I click on highlights. So in highlights, you will see some very nice pictures that you can use with your students. And for example, I choose now the Stroboli, a volcano in Italy. So you will see the bar here is down, downloads the data. I have it here already downloaded. And uh, I have also the ability to make an animation with this button at the right. Uh, this button is active when I have a login uh, email. I put my email and my password. It's very easy and it's uh, free. So 
I click on animation and I create a time lapse of this area. I will show you. And if you see, uh, I can have here um, the months, uh, for example, for one month, I can choose to have uh, one image per day. And uh, I hope that it will be uh, OK. And uh, then I will have here a button and I can click on it. And uh, for example, I can see the activity of the Stromboli um, volcano. So I think that it's uh, nice uh, for the class of uh, geology or the geography. So that's from me. I hope that you found it interesting. Thank you very much. Maria, thank you very much for your presentation and for sharing with us your ideas. It was an amazing activity and apart from the class of geography and geology, it can also be applied in other subjects as well, including statistics, natural sciences, sustainability. Uh, thank you very, very much. It was very inspiring. And uh, I would like to remind our participants, uh, if, you, if you have any questions for our speakers, please feel free to post them in the chat. So moving on to our next uh, speaker. Emine, if you are ready, the floor is yours. Emine, you are muted. Please unmute yourself. Hi, uh, dear all, greetings from Turkey. Um, today I am here to talk about my first uh, system integrated learning scenario which I created for European DSI Forge uh, project and uh, let's um, meet together again. <laughs> uh, I'm Emine, uh, I'm a school manager uh, in Toki or Tokolo. Uh, it's a lower secondary school uh, in the uh, south of Turkey and I am teaching English as well and uh, coordinating European Union projects, Comenius Erasmus Plus e winning at school. And uh, today uh, uh, my topic is integrated system in English language cl classes uh, learning scenario. Uh, OK, we can pass. <laughs> Uh, I uh, sorry for my uh, uh, presentation. I have some problems uh, with sharing my presentation. So uh, thanks to Eleni, she will share and I will follow from there. This is my first uh, learning scenario, STEM integrated learning scenario, which I created for Europeana DSI4 project, as you see in the logo. Uh, with this project, I uh, I am rewarded to uh, invite uh, to Brussels to FCL classes and uh, in my project uh, it's about astronomy uh, and uh, uh, I love astronomy so much and uh, it, th my aim for uh, creating this scenario is to raise the aver awareness uh, with my students uh, to have interest in astronomy and uh, let me check here. Uh, OK, uh, my integrated STEM, uh, STEM scenario is dedicated to astronomy, solar system, celestial objects and their uh, relation with cultural heritage. I implemented uh, my learning scenario for uh, 11 to 13 aged students. Uh, OK, we can change. Uh, OK, this is the uh, full version of my learning scenario. Uh, if you want to reach my scenario at the end of the uh, presentation, I will give you the links. Uh, the aim of this learning scenario is uh, to allow children uh, develop basic information uh, about space and astronomy by discovering and communicating basic knowledge about our solar system, the sun, the moon, the earth and other planets. Uh, as well as the uh, celestial uh, objects such as galaxy, meteors, comets, stars and satellites. Uh, in my learning scenario, I divided my learning scenario into parts. Uh, in 
first part we started with gathering information uh, from the uh, some uh, websites or some other resources from other websites or platforms. Uh, we started with science. After then, uh, with Matt, we uh, my students uh, calculated the distances of each planet to each other and to the sun. And in science, in science, we uh, on the other hand, uh, my students also. Um, um, me uh, showed the differences of temperature differences of each planet uh, to each other and uh, on the other hand to do fun activities we, we created uh, fun activities by using uh, augmented reality and create poster with QR codes after calculating the distances of each planet to the sun and identifying their temperature differences students uh, designed their own learning materials such as model of our solar system in different shapes with different materials we studied this uh, learning scenario uh, with project based learning and inquiry based learning uh, methods augmented reality collaborative learning and learning by doing are also included in our scenario uh, in our lesson. Yes, we can change. <laughs> OK, uh, the process uh, you can see the uh, sources we get from uh, web different websites uh, with my students. They were very fun activities uh, in our national curriculum, uh, both in science, le science lesson and uh, English lesson. We have the planets units uh, dedicated to this. Uh, we chose the subjects for this learning scenario, art, science, math, history, technology, English language and music. Uh, as I said before, we get information uh, from uh, for uh, about our solar system and planets. Uh, with this learning scenario, you will have the chance to introduce, introduce our solar system and other celestial subjects both in science with your mother language and also in English as second language. So the students will improve their translation, communication, reading and writing skills uh, with, uh, in, in an interesting way. Uh, in the subject of math, students calculated the distances of each planet to the sun and to each other. As for science, students uh, will have opportunity to learn about planets in solar so uh, system and uh, temperature differences, rotation of speed, and from which substances the planets consist of. Yes, we can change. <laughs> OK, you can see the my students on work in here. They created word clothes uh, after learning the names of the planets. They are uh, 11 years old and see, uh, 12 years old students in here. Yes, we can change. OK, as for history, I also integrated history in my learning scenario because we are uh, in Europeana, the SI4, we are working on digital cultural heritage. Uh, the students searched for the researchers of uh, both Eastern and Western science scientists. For cultural diver diversity, we focused on Muslim scientists because uh, it's a little bit different uh, to Europe and uh, who achieved great works uh, in the field of astronomy. Uh, in technology part, uh, we compounded works of all the scientists and created an ebook with Jumek digital tool. Mm -hmm. You can go on. <laughs> Uh, we also brought uh, new technology in our lesson. Uh, we used tablets for searching and gathering information. We created QR codes and design interactive posters, which we collected resources from Europeana, NASA and ESA. Uh, we used goggles to see the planets in 3D view with smart smartphone applications. For augmented reality, we used QR application. At the stage of production, uh, finally, uh, we got help from uh, art and designed models for our solar system and created puzzles, played and sang English song the planets. This is the uh, pictures of my students' uh, final works with final works. 
and uh, how and where I am inspired from while uh, creating this learning scenario. Uh, especially MOOCs from uh, MOOCs organized by European Schoolnet play a vital role for me to start integrating STEAM activities in my lessons. I have been enrolling courses uh, since 2017. Uh, and uh, we really, uh, I really believe that uh, it um, gives me so much in my uh, professional development. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, no, just oh, one before. OK, uh -huh. resources and webinars from uh, Space uh, EU. I also get uh, help from uh, Space EU and they I joined their webinars and uh, completed their uh, educations and searched for their educations. The next one. Uh, resources from ESA and NESA. Uh, we also get help from uh, when you enter the links of the ESA and NASA, you can fi find uh, a lot of uh, good resources for your lessons, as you see in uh, NASA STEM uh, for from uh, five to eight years old, from nine to 12 years old students, pardon, grade of students. And uh, finally, resources from Europeana. If you want to integrate history to your learning scenarios, you can uh, get uh, help from resource. Uh, you can get help from uh, Europeana with different kind of resources. Useful links. Uh, I will share my links uh, in chat section. Uh, if you want to. Uh, reach my and if you want to reach and implement my learning scenario, you can uh, reach uh, from the links. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation, Emine. We Thank particularly are excited. To my learning scenario. <laughs> Absolutely a pleasure. Thank you so much. And we particularly like that you uh, represented the, the theoretical subjects and uh, such as history, music, poetry and arts, uh, supporting very nicely the idea of integration and the A in this team. Yes, all in one. Thank you. Um, Carmelita, if you are ready, the floor is yours. Carmelita, we cannot hear you. Please unmute yeah. yourself. Okay. Yes, no, no, it's perfect. I do not have the, the sharing uh, button. I lost my sharing button. Wait a second. You can start. I will be sharing your presentation. OK, OK, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Carmelita from Italy. I've been teaching uh, mathematics and physics in uh, secondary school uh, since uh, 1991. And I'm going to share uh, one of the practices I apply with uh, my students. Um, this is a practice that gives students the opportunity of uh, observe, think, uh, predict, uh, inquiry, uh, share the knowledge and abilities through active active peer-to-peer -peer and to gain awareness of which STEM careers and which 21st century skills are connected to what they are studying. Um, thank you. Um, that is a laboratory activity uh, implemented through the GSO methodology and uh, the example I'm going to share with you is about the topic studying earthquake. 
uh, in the first step of that activity, students are divided into groups of experts, mathematician group, physicist group, and the geologist group. Uh, students in mathematicians group will work on property of logarithms, uh, students in a physicist group will work on mechanical wave propagation and students in geologist group will work on internal structure of the herd. Uh, in the second step of the activity, uh, I uh, split the groups of experts in order to form new mixed uh, groups. In those new groups, um, there is at least one mathematician student, one physicist and one geologist. Uh, I assigned to each group a specific task that could be solved uh, using all the different expert knowledge and uh, each expert will contribute uh, at the solution, explaining other students how he or she use specific knowledge acquired and related to uh, what uh, uh, is the expertise field um, uh, he belongs. Uh, I uh, have students using IT tools such as Wilton Lab, e-learning platform uh, to collect resources and homework, to communicate, to share and to collaborate. Uh, the first task to involve students could be to analyze a seismogram and to calculate the magnitude of the earthquake it represents. And the second task could be to answer why different station record different seismograms for the same earthquake. Uh, in that way, students exert observation, exp uh, experience uh, reasoning, reflection, in order to conceptualize, uh, apply, synthesize and evaluate information. And uh, they have to look for new approaches and solutions. Um, after that, you can support and guide students in acquiring their um, new skills. Uh, you can change if you want. Thank you, thank you. Um, that are communication skill, technology, literacy, collaboration and social skills because um, you can support students in listening, observing, emphasizing with their mate to gaining awareness of the power of technology tools in their uh, global expansion and uh, learning how to use those tools, uh, interacting and engaging while working uh, toward a common purpose and sharing, joining activities, asking for permission and waiting their turns. Uh, thank you. Uh, you can change, thank you. Uh, um, the activity on earthquake can be posted through a learning, uh, the learning scenario in which students analyze one of the last catastrophic earthquake and try to answer the question how and where um, we should build our houses in order to avoid such a catastrophic consequences of the natural and fatal event. Uh, experts working in that field uh, could be involved in order to have uh, them explaining their job and uh, their studies to start students. Uh, students need to gain awareness that uh, all phenomena has to be studied by scientific community and that the scientific results of uh, those inquiry have to be considered and uh, understood by uh, governors because uh, government must took decisions and act as consequences of rationally and scientifically motivated reasoning that would uh, assure citizens security and equality. Thank you. Carmelita, thank you so much for all your ideas and for sharing your presentation with us. Uh, it's always relevant to see how hands-on activities, 21st century skills are applied in the STEM classroom. And at this point, I would like to mention that Carmelita's very detailed and amazing learning scenario can be found uh, in the course as she was one of our pilot teachers. So if you haven't uh, seen, seen it already, please go in the course and um, revise it. Uh, I would like to give the floor to our next speaker, Olia, whenever you're ready. Yeah.
Uh, my congratulations. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Olya Doskochinska. I am from Ukraine. Uh, I am a computer science uh, teacher and uh, coordinator Ukrainian Future uh, Classroom Lab. Uh, I work in uh, Lyceum after uh, Ivan uh, Polui and uh, today uh, I want to talk about integration between computer science uh, teacher, the computer science, uh, biology, uh, physics and mathematics. Uh, and uh, as I use in my lesson, uh, 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 collaboration and uh, cooperation um, between um, uh, my liceum, uh, uh, my students and uh, uh, IT uh, sector in uh, my uh, uh, city. Uh, we work with uh, IT company and um, uh, uh, IT specialist uh, to create STEM uh, teaching resource. I am at uh, 14, uh, 16 years old. Uh, our student attended um, a workshop uh, at the IT company Symphony Solution. Uh, you can see in a uh, slide um, the uh, co-founder, the co-founder of um, the uh, company uh, held a meeting uh, in uh, virtual reality classes and uh, during pan uh, pandemic uh, the company created such as innovation as uh, holding a meeting in virtual reality and uh, my student uh, could try it, uh, uh, this um, virtual meeting. Uh, I often um, uh, um, I often um, uh, create uh, some uh, festivals, STEM festival uh, in my lyceum and uh, um, invite uh, uh, IT specialist uh, to lyceum. And um, in, the, in this uh, slide, um, I um, uh, want to tell that uh, collaboration and uh, teamwork in uh, uh, are a very important uh, part of uh, the work um, uh, of my student inventors. Um, uh, I often uh, use blended uh, blended learning uh, and a rotation model in my lesson. Uh, you can see at at the first station. Um, uh, I was, my student uh, conduct uh, a research in virtual uh, reality glasses. Uh, in uh, the second uh, station, um, student use uh, Mozabook uh, uh, models. And um, in uh, the third uh, station, a student um, uh, use uh, 3D printer and uh, create uh, uh, the model. Um, uh, uh, could you move uh, on the next slide? Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, in uh, this photo, you can see uh, we use um, uh, my. In, you can see integrated. Um, uh, computer science, uh, uh, biology, uh, physics, and uh, mathematics. Uh, my student create a um, uh, picture uh, with uh, plants and um, a robot uh, um, uh, and, and create a robot with uh, Arduino. And another, uh, during another uh, project, uh, students uh, use um, uh, robot uh, uh, mindstorms and uh, um, and uh, create a um, uh, prog program in the physics uh, lessons during the physics. Um, uh, students um, uh, calculate the distance from Earth uh, to Mars and um, uh, during uh, uh, biology uh, students can uh, use uh, um, virtual reality and uh, 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 conduct research um, uh, conduct research about uh, um, uh, uh, about uh, human body and um, uh, uh, could you uh, move on the next slide yeah and uh, uh, I want uh, 
talk about uh, resource uh, what I use. Uh, it's um, uh, of course it's a, a very nice resource uh, Go Lab. It's a, a Moza Moza web uh, uh, and um, uh, it's uh, uh, augmenting and virtual reality. Um, and of course, a uh, uh, great idea, um, uh, my and my uh, colleague uh, teachers. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation and for sharing your ideas with us, Olia. We particularly like the fact that you are so actively involved in organizing STEM fairs and emphasizing on uh, industry, uh, school industry collaboration. Indeed, the STEMIT project is very much about professionalization and involving industry. So you shared with us some real examples of best practices and for that we thank you. Moving on to our next speaker, uh, I would like to give the floor to Effie. Good evening all. My name is Effie and I'm a teacher, a civil engineer and an environmental engineer as well. I'm working at the Cyprus Pedagogical Institute uh, as a member of ESD unit. My main role is to support teachers across Cyprus to integrate education for sustainable development in a cross-disciplinary way. Um, and to achieve this, it is imperative to take advantage of 21st century trends in education, uh, including, of course, STEM education. So I'm really excited being with you today to discuss and share ideas and good practices regarding STEM education. Um, today, I will present you an inquiry project-based learning module entitled uh, which system will you choose as the most efficient in order to enable the energy autonomy of your school building, wind turbines or solar panels. So this learning intervention is interdisciplinary and horizontal in our national curriculum. It is a proposal for the teaching of many learning modules uh, of six different disciplines. Uh, so this learning module aims to support uh, sustainable development goals, SDG 7, 9, 11 and 13. And the purpose of the learning module is for students to evaluate the use of photovoltaic systems and wood turbines at school building in terms of their efficiency in real conditions and to decide which system is more efficient for their school and also to cultivate um, entrepreneurship in order to enhance the efficiency of each system. So I will give you a very brief description of the learning module. Students using Lego education sets uh, build the experimental devices, which you can see on your screen right now. Uh, then they place them in real conditions in outdoor settings and measure the energy produced and compare the efficiency of each system. Um, so there are a lot of factors they have to consider, like uh, air velocity in different heights, friction of different areas, sea soil, urban areas, orientation, rows, diagrams, weather conditions, and many more. So students, through several hands-on activities, um, and using several digital tools, try to solve problems. Uh, real problems like um, how can I boost the efficiency of a wind turbine? What is the optimal position of a wind turbine? What is its optimal orientation? Uh, how can I enhance the efficiency of a solar panel? What is the optimal orientation of a solar panel? What is the optimal slope? And after hands on activities, students study textual sources, audio sources, simulations, and many more in order to strengthen or refute their empirical point of view by using scientific information this time. Uh, so that's then documentation of their final decision at the driving question, which system will you choose as the most efficient in order to enable the energy autonomy of your school building will be made based on both personal and scientific criteria. So after they take the final decision, students develop 
business ideas and approaches to enhance the efficiency of the system they have chosen. So they cultivate entrepreneurship through problem solving, such as can you design, build and program a wind turbine in such a way that it moves according to changes in wind direction? Or if you consider that the photovoltaic system produces more energy when the sun's rays um, uh, fall perpendicular to it, could you build a photovoltaic system that would follow the sun from east to west while maintaining a southerly orientation? Could you build a photovoltaic system which would be able to increase its inclination during the winter months when the sun is lower and reduces its inclination during summer months to ensure the verticality in between the photovoltaic and the sun? Could you really do this? Could you really imagine? Could you really imagine that you will invent such a product? Oh, yes. You can see students learning products at your screen right now. So what the industry has to say about these products and because every ESD program should lead to an action, our action here is to communicate our conclusions to our local community here in Cyprus, the island of sunlight, in order to uh, in order to people to change their solar panel slope during summer and winter time so that we can produce more and more clean energy through our existing through our existing um, systems. So um, so that we can produce um, uh, and at the same time reduce the energy produced by burning fossil fuels that the Cypriot citizens will make the greatest contribution to tackling the climate change that plagues our planet. Now, another action is to promote our model in industry so that it can produce more efficient systems with fewer materials and with respect for the planet's natural resources. Thus, in this interdisciplinary learning module, uh, entrepreneurship is cultivated through the STEM uh, pedagogical approach while supporting SDGs and cultivating um, a dynamic set of skills where an entire generation can work together to solve global challenges and problems so that we can ensure sustainability for a fairer, more peaceful and prosperous world that enjoys a healthy planet. Thank you. Effie, thank you so much for sharing your presentation with us, your activities, your ideas and the project all together. Uh, once again, we would like to thank all our participants and especially our speakers for being here today and sharing their ideas with us. And we would also like your insight and input as to how uh, you worked collaboratively in your teams because you all teach in secondary schools and uh, this is an integrated STEM teaching course. So uh, we would like to hear your opinions about how the idea of integration was supported through the activities and the combination of subjects that you and your colleagues uh, that selected went. Feel free to unmute yourselves and uh, give us your opinion. Carmelita, Emine, Maria, Effie. I have some connection problems with the sound. Can you repeat the question again, please? Yes, we would like to know, since you are all secondary school teachers, how was your collaboration with your colleagues, since this is an integrated STEM teaching course and uh, you had to collaborate with uh, your colleagues that teach different subjects. So how teamwork essentially worked for you? Uh, for me, uh, I'm not a science teacher or math teacher. I get help uh, as for science and as for when it comes to mathematics uh, from my colleagues uh, and I only, uh, help them in uh, teaching the uh, 
less uh, teaching these topics in English uh, as for uh, how to uh, teach students, uh, for example, speaking, uh, for example, singing a song uh, in a funny way. Uh, I t tell them uh, in integrate English in your lessons, uh, for example, uh, teach them a song, a song from, uh, pardon, a song uh, about astronomy as I uh, chose in my learning scenario, or I get help from them uh, as for science. Uh, I choose science topics because they are very interesting for my students, and, and I try to uh, translate uh, them uh, very, very basically uh, into my lessons. When I put science in my lesson, or when I put mathematics in my lesson, uh, my students find it very interesting and very funny. Uh, and when we use also technological tools yeah, like goggles and uh, augmented reality uh, tools, uh, on the other hand, uh, digital, digital tools, uh, they like English lesson more and they find it uh, more interesting than ever they uh, studied. <laughs> Um, thank you very much indeed you can do many things and uh, organize several activities for the combination of arts and science topics uh, you also you mentioned several in your presentation as well and we have a question for you uh, a, a participant is asking dear Mine, congratulations for your presentation i want to know if you were inspired for from coldplay for your steam project yes title. yes exactly <laughs> It comes from, uh, I am the very, very I love uh, Coldplay very much and uh, a sky full of stars. Uh, okay, when I was uh, driving to school one day, uh, I was listening to a sky full of stars and uh, it really uh, higher my energy. Then I said to myself, okay, my topic will be a sky full of stars. <laughs> Thank you very much. Both I'm really inspired. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> and to the uh, participant who asked the question, um, Carmelita, I believe you want to mention something? Um, about the collaboration with my um, with my colleague, do you mean? Yes, about the collaboration with your team, but also uh, we were interested in knowing how uh, your students' motivation increased uh, during this uh, project because you are one of our fellow teachers and we know that you implemented the learning scenario uh, as early as uh, yeah. last May. Yes, um, with my colleagues, um, the collaboration uh, is uh, fluently because uh, um, each of us um, especially in this period in which uh, uh, we are having uh, lessons at distance, uh, we try to, uh, to uh, keep in touch uh, with uh, all the kind of uh, communication uh, uh, we can use. Uh, so we, we try to, um, to, to stay always uh, connected uh, with our students uh, in order to involve them. Uh, so the collaboration uh, wo is working with my colleagues and uh, students also um, uh, they they are missing uh, uh, <laughs> that is uh, that is something uh, they they never uh, thought before they are missing a school uh, they are missing school in presence so when um, when teachers uh, propose new uh, new mm, new methodology. Uh, they are very very motivated to follow students to follow teachers. Thank you very much, Carmelita. Uh, Effie, I believe you had uh, a couple of comments to share with us. Yeah, I put them uh, in chat. Um, I wrote that. Um, uh, students' uh, motivation for learning increased um, due to hands-on activities. That was a, a very important um, and also um, real-world problems and uh, uh, inquiry project-based learning helped a lot uh, to that direction. And um, for the question, uh, you were asking us before uh, about um, the integration in our school. Uh, I found out that if you have 
uh, teachers uh, that uh, have a vision and uh, and believe and understand um, the value of STEM. Uh, it's more easiest, easier for you to uh, make this integration a reality. Um, of course, uh, we absolutely agree. And also due to the specific and very particular circumstances right now, uh, several of you, well, most of you had to go uh, and uh, convert your teaching into an online teaching. So naturally, uh, I suppose that most of you opted for integrating ICT and uh, the technology uh, subject in your courses or um, uh, specific activities. So uh, by that, I mean that uh, your lessons are now more um, rely more on technology than for most likely before, which uh, gives you the opportunity to um, apply more integrated uh, STEM teaching approach. Uh, I believe that now in COVID uh, <laughs> situation, um, we can think STEM projects uh, that uh, students can uh, deal with them at home, uh, alone, uh, autonomous learning, and um, with their parents as well. Uh, so I think it's an opportunity for us to develop our STEAM projects, uh, distance learning STEAM projects. Distance learning STEAM projects, very, very interesting. And uh, now that you are not in regular touch uh, with uh, your students, as in physical touch, and this uh, this is a question for all our presenters, but also our participants who can share their examples and input in the chat. How do you measure their performance and how do you assess your students now that uh, traditionally traditional methods for assessment like testing are not uh, so much of an option anymore? Uh, can I speak? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, yes, we use uh, many tools now, uh, like uh, the Kahoot tests, or we have in Greece the platform eClass that you can uh, use uh, this platform for assessments. Um, but uh, I think that, um, um, for example, if uh, you use uh, GoLab, you can have also the activity of the students. Uh, I think that um, we don't, uh, um, we have to make an assessment, a different assessment. Uh, and I think that platforms like uh, GoLab um, indicates the right method because you can have um, all the phase of uh, the learning process, for example, and not only um, the, 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 the solutions, their solutions. So I think that we need, um, we, uh, the teachers, I mean, we need um, tools like a Go Lab, for example. I think. Thank you very much, Maria. Indeed, Go Lab is an extremely popular tool that uh, more and more teachers choose to use, and it can be applied in so many uh, STEM related activities. Um, and we have a contribution from participants uh, agreeing with you, saying games are great for assessment, such as Kahoot and Menti. And but the importance is to keep uh, their interest and not uh, purely focus on assessment. Ask them and inspire them to do things. Yes, of course, and this is what we aim with uh, the STEMIT project. The STEMIT is a very multifaceted project that focuses on um, professionalization, hands-on activities, inquiry-based science education and project-based learning. So by that, we aim to promote those uh, teaching uh, methods. And of course, uh, this brings me to my next point. Uh, this is also interlinked with the learning products and uh, how you choose to, which, what kind of activities you choose to focus on with your students. Um, and we are very, very much looking forward to, into reading and seeing your learning scenarios and seeing what kind of activities, methods and learning products you all chose. I would like to ask if you have any question for any of our speakers today. Thank you so much to all our presenters and participants for sharing all those resources and the links and the compilation of materials in the chat. And of course, we're going to share and merge all the presentations that were used today. 
Uh, we will upload the recording of this webinar and the presentations tomorrow. So all of those materials are going to be uh, easily accessible to you. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity <laughs> to share our uh, good practices with our colleagues and uh, uh, questions from uh, our colleagues. Thank you very much. Absolutely, the pleasure is all ours. Thank, thanks to you and your team members and uh, all the participants who supported the course. We are very, very proud of this course and we are very much looking forward into the final uh, activities come to an end and we see what you have all created. Um, as a reminder, uh, the, core, the, the deadline to submit all your activities is December 2. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out via email in the, uh, in the Facebook groups or uh, in the platform. Okay. Unless we have any other question from our participants in the chat. We think that we can already wrap up this uh, event. It seems no. So thank you very much, everyone. And on behalf of the STEMIT team, and especially my colleagues, Avita and Yelena, who are here with us today, we wish you a lovely evening. And uh, we want to wish you uh, good luck with the final uh, activities and uh, the deadlines. Bye. Good evening. Bye bye. Good evening. Bye bye. Bye everyone.